Hello and welcome. Today's video is another user request. It's with the Neo uh, GPS. He was asking about the M8M. It's the same thing. It, as long as the connector at the end is made for a PixHox or an APM 2.6, the only difference is a space between the black and the RX, I believe. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty easy setup. Anyways, Bella asked me to make this video. Uh, check out his video if you want. He has a nice little video of him walking his dog. His dog almost gets hit by a car and then he ends up jacking a boat. And yeah, so back to my video. All right, so like usual now, I'm just gonna jump into a picture instead so you don't have to continue watching the entire video. I don't have any ads or anything like that. So it's 100% pointless making my videos extremely long for no reason and uh yeah so i'm just gonna number them one two three space five and here's one three two five so it's straightforward one connect gets connected to one two gets connected to two three to three five to five orient orient your connector the same way as i did here with the pins facing the bottom this way it'll be the same like i said the difference between the pixox and the apm 2.6 is you'll have an extra space here but it'll be exactly the same setup so just orient your uh, connector the same way. It doesn't matter if you have different colors here. Just even make uh, take a picture or just make a color chart so you don't get confused after. And uh, yeah, so here's the I2C plug and this would just get plugged in directly. So I'll show that here. No, I won't. So here's the connections here now with the uh, wires. So again, it's just the black RX, TX and your five volts. And then here's the I2C, the way it gets connected. I'm pretty sure this is uh, it. just the way it comes stock, just plug it in that way. I had to flip my two cables around, but I think that's because uh, I had screwed up. I was doing another project and I just pulled this out of my junk drawer and that's the way it was. But anyways, if it doesn't work this way, just flip the, the blue and the white around or if you have different colors, just flip them around. It's pretty straightforward. All right, guys, I'm gonna jump right into the video now. So this should be good enough. Um, I'll show mission planner settings right at the end. Basically, you just have to go back to your compass setting and set to external and set it to roll if you're using the external compass or with the compass with the GPS. If you're using the stock GPS, then just leave the settings the same for the compass at least. All right. Hello and welcome. Today's video is going to be about upgrading the uh, original CX20 OEM APM, the version 252, version 5 with a Neo GPS or something similar to it. I've been skipping this basically because uh, most of my videos are geared towards upgrading the APM 2.6 and that would force you guys to cut these uh, wires and do a direct solder. But on this guy here, I'll show you an alternative way. Well, you still have to cut wires and you should solder, but you don't have to. All right, so I guess I'll just jump into it. So here's the I2C or the uh, the compass and the GPS here. I took everything out of the quad because I don't really use this anymore. Now you're gonna have an option here. You can either use this APM or this compass, I mean, or the compass that actually comes in here. So let's just get that out of the way right now so I can show you. So this little chip here is actually the same chip in here. So it's really up to you if you want to uh, use the compass in this or just use the old one. If uh, you don't use the old one or if you use the old one, then I would suggest just keeping the um, GPS inside the CX-20. If you're gonna use the compass with your new GPS unit and you're gonna mount it here, you're gonna have to make sure that this cable here is gonna be actually long enough to reach it, which it should but you can just do a quick measure like that. So this one's a lot shorter, where I have another one here that's actually really long. So just do some quick measuring, make sure everything fits in. Maybe take off the bottom and just confirm. I'll just show you guys quickly the two chips, just to get that out of the way as well, just to show you that they're actually the same and what to look for. So just open up this guy. All right, so there's the compass chip there and there. So I'll just take a quick picture of it so I can zoom in.
All right, so continuing on. If you're gonna mount this inside the um, CX-20, you're gonna have to take off the back case here so you can mount it on the puck on the back. That'll be up to you guys how you do it. All right, the color codes. So on the uh, CX-20, on the APM-252, the pinouts go like this. It would go round, RX, TX, five volts. That's for this guy here. And then the compass, I'll just have to get into that after. And on these guys here, you might have a six pin or a five pin. The only difference is between the five pin and the six pin here for the Molex is you'll have two spaces between the black and the RX. And then uh, the color code doesn't really matter. So here's another one with a brown wire instead. So just keep in mind that the yellow one is usually always your TX and the second one after that is your RX. All right, so we'll go with this guy here. And the pinouts for this guy here would be your ground, your RX, your TX, and your uh, five volts. And then here is the I2C, and that one would be B. The blue one is your SCL, and the white one is your SCA. And uh, that's gonna be the option here, is if you have a long enough cable, what you can do is if you don't wanna use the original, this is the easiest one, is you can just actually plug this right into it, and I'll show that after. So your options now, I'm kinda of babbling here, is uh, you're gonna have to cut these wires. You have no choice and you're going to have to put them on this, these guys here. So just do take your time, do one at a time. What I suggest doing is, I'll show a picture of it as well, but just to get this out of the way quickly, is just make a quick quick cheat sheet here. So, okay, so what you're going to want to do now is you're going to have to cut this wire back up to here about, I guess, so you have some good access to the wire. So just find a razor blade or something. Be careful with all these little wires here. You don't want to have these falling on your board or anything. All right, so you probably wanna cut it a little bit up about here. This way you can reuse these connectors after. So right now I'm just gonna show you with this guy here. So I'm just gonna cut it. All right, so you have an option here to either cut these wires or you can actually just rip the wires out of here and then re-solder them. That's up to you how you wanna do it. So here, if you can, you can rip the wire out and then uh, plug the other wire in and then solder it. Or if you can't solder, your other option is to cut these and you're just gonna have to twist the wires on one by one. So we'll start with this guy. So if you're just gonna twist the wires on, you're gonna have to leave quite a bit of wire so you can have a proper twist and then just tape it up. What I'm gonna do quickly is just re-solder them into the ends here like that. Probably be the best option. So I'll go fast forward.
way these guys get plugged in now. I had this upside down before. I also have a broken one here, which this thing is actually quite annoying. So it actually might be better just to uh, twist these wires on instead because these can be a pain in the butt to get back in here and you want a really solid connection. So that'll be up to you how you want to do it. So this guy would go black first. Oh, this is a mess. Okay. Black one's not going to stay in there too good now. Then yellow. Brown. You might have to use some hot glue on the bottom of it too, just to make sure. This guy made too fat. Okay, so that's the way it goes there. So it goes ground, RX, TX, and then your 5 volts. On the APM, just gets back plugged back right at the top again. Like that. So if, this cable is just way too short for the CX-20. So you'll have to keep this inside the unit and then just use the uh, factory compass. Now your other option with this guy is you just have to turn the APM around and just plug it in into the I2C. Now if it doesn't work, what you might have to do is swap those two pins around. Now I've been doing lots of modding, so I'm not exactly sure which way this cable actually originally was. I just grabbed this out of one of my junk drawers. And for me, I actually had to flip them around. So I'm not 100% sure if you have to or not. So try it once with it, not swapped. And then if you get a compass error or no compass, then just simply swap these two around. That's the way it would go. And then you just plug this guy like I said, right into the I2C port where the other one used to be. And like this setup here, it should work. Um, like I said, the cables are too short, but whatever. You guys uh, figure that out on your own. Ah. And uh, yeah, so hopefully this was helpful. Uh, like and subscribe, and that's it. All right, connect the USB to your APM. If you have a red light on it, that means it's probably wired right. You won't have a green light flashing right away, depending what a GPS unit you have anyways. So here under GPS 3D fix, if it just says GPS, no GPS, that means there's something wrong with your wires. You might have to reverse the TX and the RX around. Also, if it says um, compass health, it has a bad compass or no compass or anything about the compass error, Right here, that means you might have to swap those two cables around too on the I2C or just double check your cable. Now if you're running the if you're running the compass in this guy here, you should be able to hold the APM and turn the compass and make sure it's working. So things should be moving up in the HUD. And if you're using the compass that comes with this and you're not using the stock compass, you're going to have to go to config and tuning. Go to, oops, sorry, go to initial setup, go to compass. And if you set up the GPS in the puck like this in this direction, Set it to rotation roll 180. And then after that, do a live calibration and do the dance. Once you click on a live calibration too, you should get these dots. If you don't get these dots, that's again, there's something wrong with your connection. 
and you should be able to do the dance with it now. All right. Okay, I think I covered everything. If you guys run into any problems at all, just hit me up on YouTube. If I'm ignoring you for some reason, just find my newest video and post in there if there's another video above this one because sometimes YouTube doesn't notify me of comments. All right, guys, thanks for watching.